In our previous videos, we looked at things like creating tables, adding data, and even starting to work with creating queries. But sometimes we need a little bit more advanced types of queries. Queries where we filter out information instead of displaying everything. Let's take a simple look at this where we have our query product info. I'm going to double click on it so I can see the results and notice that it displays all my products even if they're discontinued. I don't want to display the discontinued products. So I'm going to go into my design view and notice here I have my discontinued column. Now discontinued is a yes no field but we're not going to put in yes and no. I'm going to put in false. I'm going to click on my datasheet view and notice now I'm only showing two products. I'm not showing my discontinued one. That's because I filtered out anything where that said true. My criteria said this had to be false. So if you're not false, in this case true, you're not being displayed. So because these two products are not discontinued, it's displaying these two. Now I could have had hundreds of products with maybe a dozen that were discontinued and it would continue to remove any of my discontinued ones only showing me those that are currently active. It makes it very simple and for a yes no or a true false field if you prefer this makes it very very easy to work with. But let's look at a couple other queries where we can filter out other information. I'm going to save this real quick and close my query and I'm going to create a new query. I'm going to choose query design, customers, and close. Now I'm going to display almost all my information. First name, last name, phone, and email. I'm going to set a criteria where I want my first name to be Lance. So I'm going to type in Lance. And if I tab off that cell, notice that it puts quotes around it. Now Access uses double quotes. Most databases, when they look at a string, they put single quotes around them. That is one difference that Access has between most relational databases. If I click on my datasheet view, you notice that only the information for Lance appears. Go back into design mode, and in front of Lance, I'm going to put a less than and greater than symbol. When I do that and click on datasheet view, notice that two customers show up, but Lance does not. In fact, what it's showing is if you're not Lance, and that's what that less than and greater than symbol are, is it's showing that if I'm not Lance, I'm going to display. If I look inside my SQL view, you can see here I have a where clause, and that's what the criteria is. It's just creating a where clause for my SQL. In this case, it says customers.firstName is not equal to Lance. So we don't have to know the SQL commands to make this work. Access is going to do it for me. I'm going to remove my combination for Lance. And I'm going to look now in putting something in last name. And I'm going to choose Smith. But I might want to have Smith or maker as my last names. Well, in order to do an or, all I'm going to do is go to my cell immediately below my Smith criteria. Notice that off to the left hand side it's or, and notice I have actually a lot of cells, so I can have a lot of ors in here. And so if I come here and now view data sheet, it's going to display both Mary Smith and Lance Maker because both of those last names are matches. So very, very simple to work with. Let's look at another thing. and This is a pretty common thing that you're going to have. We're going to take out Smith and Maker. We're going to look at phone. And I'm going to say I want to find a wildcard. As long as it starts with this, I'm good. And so, for example, I might want to find everyone in the same area code. So if I put in area code 305 and click run, notice that nothing shows up. And that's because it's looking for an exact match. We needed to find something that starts with 305. 
So I'm going to modify this just a little bit and put a star in between my five and my double quote. And notice now Lance Maker appears because his phone number starts with a 305. In SQL, this is a light command. And if I come here to my SQL view, you'll notice it says we're customers.phone like 305 star. Star is a wild card, and so anything after that, it just has to start with it. I can make it so that my field ends with a value, starts with a value, or simply contains a value by putting the star in different locations. Beginning, end, or both. We typically don't have in the middle. That can cause some confusion. Some databases don't allow wildcards like that. Other relational databases are going to use a percentage sign for a wildcard instead of the star. This is vendor specific and Access is one of the few that actually uses a star. But these are some real simple ways to filter out and create some queries. Now, you can also use things like greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, or less than or equal to. But I'm going to show you one more that's just a little bit different. I'm going to close this query window. I don't need to save it, so I'm going to click No. And I'm going to come over here to my invoice. Once again, I'm going to double click on it so I can see all my results. But I might want to look for only databases that have not been fulfilled. That is where date fulfilled is blank. So I'm going to go to design view, come here to my date fulfilled, and under my criteria, I'm going to say is null. Notice that access automatically capitalizes it for me. But now when I click view, it's only bringing up my invoice that has not been fulfilled. And if I have a large number of invoices, I could have potentially hundreds of invoices, maybe even thousands that have been created. I can run a simple query like this to find my unfulfilled ones and maybe figure out why is it not fulfilled? Are we waiting on a missed payment? Is a product been discontinued, out of stock, etc.? So this would be a real important thing for me to know as a business in order to be more successful. So anytime I'm missing data or I'm looking for missing data, I can use the is null. I can also likewise come in and is not null. And when I have is not null, that's looking for some sort of data. Any data, doesn't matter what the value is. And so this is a really nice tool that we can use in order to find missing data that may be missing on purpose and for specific reasons such as maybe something hasn't been fulfilled. So those are some simple ways that we can create some filters on our queries to limit the rows that we display to give us more meaningful information.